This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on the color tools inside Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you two different ways to make sure your skin tones are accurate. A big challenge that we often have is skin tones. And you may not be able to see this on your set at home, but she is green. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to select the clip. And first thing I do is look at the grayscale value. I'm looking at the waveform monitor. The black levels are a little high. We'll pull that down because she's got this nice black vest on. The highlights are okay. There's nothing which is particularly bright there. Probably the brightest thing is the reflection on the wheel. I could pull that down if I wanted, but really it's perfectly okay the way it is. And I could tweak the midtones, but midtones are okay. From a grayscale point of view, this shot is essentially fine. From a color point of view, it isn't at all. Now I could use the balance color tool, click on her white t-shirt and just fix this problem and get on with the next chask. But I want to do this manually to show you another technique. With the clip selected, go to the viewer menu and select crop right down here. And it allows me to trim. Notice I have trim selected. It allows me to trim the image so I can isolate on a part of the frame. And I'm going to isolate on her white t-shirt right there and when I do look at what's happened in the vector scope see that little little thing right there hanging out that's supposed to be white or at least gray because she's wearing a white t-shirt that should be a single dot in the center of the vector scope but it isn't because I've got a color cast here so how do I dial that out well in this case I'm going to dial it out using the midtone setting because that's where I have the greatest color control. You could use the master setting, and frankly, I've used both, depending upon what I'm demoing. But for right now, I'm going to use midtones. I'm going to grab it. And notice as I drag it, I can change the location of that dot in the vector scope. And I'm going to keep dragging until I get that dot pretty much in the center, right there, of the vector scope. Now when I click Reset, look what I just did. This is where we were before, this is where we are now, before and now. The grayscale image was pretty much fine. I pulled the black level down just a little bit, but the rest of it was okay. I then isolated specifically on something that I knew was gray, her white t-shirt. But I hear you say, what happens if I don't have something which is white or gray in the shot? For instance, here, let's get Lisa looking at us. It's not bad, it's kind of dark, but I don't have anything that's on the skin tone line, and I don't have anything gray that I can click on. What could I possibly use? The most obvious thing in the shot, which is your skin. Let's fix this. Select the clip. Again, pull the black levels down, right about there. I want to pull the white levels up. There's nothing which is pure white, so this is a, a taste decision, but her skin, her face, the brightest part of which is here, should be around 60% grayscale. I'll give you a table in a bit. So I want to pull that up a bit to get her back where she should be. And we'll take a look at the... Yeah, that's pretty good. I kind of like that. Don't need to adjust that. Just needed to pull the, the shadows down and the highlights up. But her skin still isn't on the skin tone line. Select the clip. Go back to trim, and this time I'm going to trim, but I'm going to focus on her skin, not on her clothing. One of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want to grab a cheek that's way too often got makeup on it, especially for women, and the makeup could, could just totally screw up the color grading. So I either work with her forehead, or I'm going to work with her neck. In this case, I'm going to work with her neck, which tend not to have color makeup applied but are a really good place to see what her skin looks like. Now, she should be on the skin tone line, except she's way over here toward red. We should probably move that a bit. Here I'm going to use the master control, and again, it's a choice between master and midtones. I'm going to use the master, 
and pull that over to the skin tone line. I just moved a little bit to get that color cast out. Boost the saturation just a bit, not a lot. Notice that it's right here on the skin tone line. And we'll reset this. It's just a little bit too saturated. There we go. And look where we ended up. This is before. And this is after. Before. And after. This is hard because those those yellow sound blankets in the, are in the back are really violently yellow. Yet they are as ugly as they look. And it was confusing the scope because you would say, hey, that's her skin, but it isn't. That was the sound blankets behind her. Her skin is right where it needs to be, 60, 65%, right for the well-lit part. And she's right on the skin tone line. And we've got a really, really pretty picture. This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at color tools inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 278. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.